Podcast for your soul, your compass, your journey, your light. Welcome to Podcast for your soul. My name is Nico Balschewald and this podcast is for spiritual people who like to listen for, to spiritual mentors from around the world and they share their soul paths, their experience and their journey. And today my guest is Sergio Bambarain and Sergio is a writer and he used to be a CEO of a multinational company in Sydney. And by now he wrote 26 books, uh, international bestsellers. Um, amongst the books, you might know The Dolphin, but also The Guardian of the Light. And his newest book uh, is called uh, The Messenger or in German Der Bote. And it's becoming a world bestseller. And Sergio says about himself, he's a dreamer that made his dream come through by following the voice of the heart. Sergio, I feel honored to have you as my guest. Thank you for taking the time. Welcome. Oh, good afternoon, Nico. The, the honor is all mine. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm basically, you are in my living room and in my bedroom at the moment yeah. because I'm listening to your audio books uh, at the moment, Guardian of Light. I just had the, the dolphin, amazing, so inspiring for me. I feel so touched that I reached, reached out and uh, yeah, thank you for, for doing this. And so Sergio, I'm, I'm curious to understand what happened uh, that a successful um, CEO, all of a sudden turned in an even more successful writer. How did it happen? Well, uh, Nico, to tell you the truth, uh, I'm a very humble person. Mm. Uh, you know, the fact that for some reason I sold so many books around the world doesn't make me better or worse than anyone. Mm. Uh, I think we all have something to give to the world. Mm. But uh, answering your question, um, it's very simple. Um, since I was a, a small kid, I was basically born in a house in front of the ocean. Mm. Uh, and uh, since I, I can remember, I had this amazing bond with the ocean. Mm. Uh, and I, I still have it. It's, it's home for me. Mm. And uh, when I was seven years old, I discovered uh, uh, surfing. And the first time I, I, I surfed the wave and I glided uh, on this wall of moving water, mm. I knew I was going to be hooked forever. Mm. Uh, because it's there where I feel the closest to. to what life is all about. Mm. Uh, so basically, uh, I did what, you know, normally everyone does. Uh, I, I went to school, uh, uh, had a wonderful childhood, beautiful parents. And then uh, because of surfing, we're like nomads. Mm. <laughs> and we're yeah. always in, in search of the perfect wave. So in a way, we also love to travel. Mm. And uh, I graduated uh, as a chemical engineer and also uh, an MBA in, in the States, in Texas A&M University. Mm. And, but that was the, the excuse because basically uh, I would wait for the, for, for, for the holidays to go to surf to Hawaii, to Mexico, to uh, California. Uh, it was so strong, the bond. Mm. Uh, and having traveled so much, uh, I think there's no better way than to see the world with your own eyes. Mm. Um, to tell you the truth, besides this beautiful podcast like yours, I don't watch TV, I don't watch uh, newspapers, mm. I don't read them, mm. because they are full of bad news, mm. and, and there are so many wonderful things around the world. Yeah. So, uh, I had this back of, of traveling, I've been a traveler all my life. And I decided to go to, to Sydney, to Australia. Mm -hmm. And again, because when I was a kid, I dreamed of surfing all these beautiful places, uh, mystical places like New, New Caledonia, Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, 
uh, places that uh, when I was a kid looked so far away, but I knew I was going to do it. And for some reason, I really started to escalate positions in, in the company I was working in. And one day I found out I was the CEO of the company in charge of Asia and Australia and New Zealand. Mm. And at the beginning, of course, uh, I thought, well, it's, I mean, I felt good with myself. I felt it was a wonderful achievement. I had worked uh, hard to get there. But, uh, and of course, one of these uh, positions uh, will bring you what I call all the fancy toys, mm. uh, fancy grown up toys. Yeah. Uh, the beautiful car, the beautiful house, uh, first class when you travel, six star hotels. And, and for the first six months, I felt uh, wonderful. But then one day I woke up and I never felt so miserable in my life. Mm. And, and I did, that day I thought a lot and I knew what was happening. Instead of uh, living to work, I was working to live. Mm -hmm. And I had lost what for me is the most important and precious treasure I have in my life, which is my time. Mm -hmm. Time to do the things I love, uh, time to, to find the true purpose of my life and live accordingly to, to what I am. Be true to myself and... and, and um, be me mm. instead of being what others would like me to be. Yeah. Uh, so and that that happened literally in one day where you 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 felt miserable. Then it, you said that's not me, and then you changed, or you was see, it a longer process? Yeah, uh, it, it was a very short process. Uh, it, it was like it, it had already been building up, mm. but the day I decided. Uh, to take a decision, um, it was basically that day. Uh, you see, I've based my life uh, uh, listening to the voice of my heart mm. because I always say the same. Mm. Uh, you can you can say something which is true, something which is not true, but you can never lie to yourself. Mm. Uh, when you're doing something good, you can feel it in your heart. Yeah. If you're doing something which is not that good, you feel it in your heart. Yeah. So, yeah. And then my case, I decided mm. never to lie to my heart. Mm. Yeah. And I think that that's the difference also between you and many other people, because many people might feel that, but they don't take inspired action. But that's you really you feel it in your heart, and then you follow your heart. And I think that's a profound message also for the listeners. Yes. Uh, again, I, I, I'm no one to judge others. Uh, the only thing I can say is that if I have one life to live, a precious life, that for me is a gift of the universe. Mm. What I do with my life will be my gift to the universe. Mm. And, I get goosebumps. And, and that means I have to be totally consequent with myself and, and, and again, be myself by following my dreams and discovering the true purpose of my life. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that. I, think that I got such an energy when you said that. Oh, okay. so, so, so you said um, your life is a gift by the universe. What you do with it is your gift to the universe. Correct. Right? Wow. Correct. Because I mean, um, we should, I think, I believe, we shouldn't give life for granted. Mm. Uh, the fact that we're here uh, speaking right now and the fact that we're in this wonderful planet, mm. uh, it's a gift. Mm. Uh, yeah. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, so. And, and, and I feel and can sense, and in, in the books uh, I, I listen to and I'm reading, I always feel that strong bond of your soul to the ocean and to surfing. Yeah? And, and I read that uh, you were swimming with a dolphin in Portugal, and this experience inspired you to write the book, The Dolphin. Is that correct? Or? Totally correct. And uh, again, uh, 
uh, I always say life works in stranger but wonderful ways. Mm. Uh, I never had written anything in my life. Uh, the only thing I, I had written were when I was in, in high school, I remember helping my friends writing love letters to her girlfriends mm. until they caught me and I got into a, a big problem. <laughs> but, but that was it. Mm. And, and yeah, I, I had this mystical uh, encounter with a dolphin in, in, in a beach very close to Lisbon mm. because after quitting my job, I decided to take a sabbatical year to find myself again. And the reason I had a laptop with me uh, was that uh, I left everything. I gave everything away. It, all, all the material treasures I had, I gave them away after quitting the job because I had to prove myself. Mm. Are you really going to follow uh, your principles, the way you think? Or it's so easy just to go and when you come back, everything is there. Uh, it was a very tough decision at the moment, at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I surfed with this dolphin for three days and two nights because of a full moon. It was, wow. the ocean was like a silver mirror. And when I came out, I opened my laptop because uh, every day I would put my expenses of this year had taken uh, in my laptop because I didn't have too much money and uh, I had to be sure that the money would be enough to last a year mm -hmm. and don't ask me why uh, it has occurred twice in my life in writing the first one was with the dolphin the trauma and dolphin uh, it was like a catharsis mm -hmm. it just came from the heart mm -hmm. And I remember, as it was yesterday, uh, my heart, uh, listening to my heart without the words passing throughout my, through my mind. And uh, my fingers moving in the computer, uh, like I was so bonded at that time with, with uh, the universe mm -hmm. that uh, this dolphin had a mission, a purpose. And I, all my life, I've swim with dolphins and whales. I love it. Mm. But it gave me a message uh, that I didn't know. And, and the only thing I could think about uh, putting in was in words. Mm. And the story doesn't end there. I'll make it short. Uh, when I went back to Australia, to Sydney, uh, I took a job, of course, that uh, didn't uh, pay me so much but gave me the time to, to do the love, to do the things I love to do. Uh, uh, and 200 friends of mine read the book, uh, read the manuscript, and they said, why, why don't you send it to a publishing house? What I'm trying to say is that it, it is a book that was never supposed to be published. Mm. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't look for a publisher. Mm. And yeah. one day, one day, you know, out from the blues, uh, uh, a publisher, Random House, called me. They wanted to, to, to buy the rights. And th I think this is very important. I'm sorry for being so long. Um, that was the, uh, the second really difficult, tough question, uh, decision. Uh, normally, when you write a book and you know it, uh, the publishing house will give you a final manuscript that you have to give your okay, that it, it, it's ready for publishing. Mm. And when I received the final manuscript, they had changed 50% oh. of what I had written. Mm. So I said, this is not what I wrote. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, yes, but this is what sells. Mm. So again, you, you stay true to your heart. Huh? And I said, either you publish it the way it is or the contrary is hard. Wow. And, and again, you hear all these people that uh, seem to know better. You know, you will regret it. We are the experts. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but I promised when I left my job as a CEO, I promised three things. Mm -hmm. Never again in my life to use a tie. Never again in my life to mm -hmm. use a watch. 
Mm. And never again not to listen to the voice of the heart. Mm -hmm. So the uh, decision was taken. And the book was self-published self by these two friends of us. To my surprise, the first year, it sold like 100,000 copies in Australia. And then for some reason, it got into the Frankfurt Book Fair, which you know is the biggest uh, book fair in the world. And that was 20 years ago. Mm. It, it lands so deep, Sergio. You touched me just with the three things you mentioned. Whew. But also, now I understand the book even different because it's really you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, because you are the surfer who, who riding the wave is the dolphin. Nico, uh, it took me 10 years to read the book and say, why? Because at that time I, I hadn't lived. Mm -hmm. And 20 years later, when I read the book, you're totally right. It's a story of my life. Yeah. But I wrote it 20 years ago. I didn't mm. know I was going to live all the things I've lived through this wonderful 20 years. Mm. So in so, my case, mm. uh, uh, to listen to the voice of the heart uh, has been my, my guide and the ocean has always been my best friend. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, and, and, and you can feel in the book how connected your soul is to the ocean and to the surfing and what it, what it means. And, and it's just, you take the reader or the listener, I had it as an audio book, uh, really on, on a ride where I felt I'm in the ocean. I felt I am the dolphin. And it's just such an adventure. And for me, it was just such a symbol of breaking out of the golden cage, if you will, and just mm -hmm. quest, questioning myself. And it's so beautiful the way you do this uh, through a story. Uh, so you said so you were surfing with the dolphin for three days in a row. In two nights. Yes, uh, I can tell you the name of the beach is called Ginsho. Mm -hmm. It's a surfing beach out in the outsides of Lisbon, mm -hmm. and uh, out from nowhere, uh, I was by, by myself because everyone was working. Uh, it was during the day, and this magical dolphin just came in, and every time I would go into the water. Uh, I would catch a wave, and suddenly the dolphin would appear. This and right away it would be. My God. <laughs> uh, again, uh, you see, uh, one of the things uh, I've learned in my life, at least me, uh, Nico, is that I, could, I don't question those things anymore. Mm. I just go with the flow. Mm. And the other thing that really surprised me was, as I said, I never wrote that book to sell it. I wrote it because it came from the heart and for me it was the key to get away, to finally open the golden cage. I had placed myself in, in the business world, which there's nothing wrong to be in the business world if you love it. Mm -hmm. But again, love what you do. Mm -hmm. In my case, it, it wasn't my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and um, now I feel totally alive, and as I always say, no regrets, mm. not a single one. Beautiful. Yes. And of course, I have problems like everyone, mm. but that's part of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, there is yeah, an an another book um, which which I'm just. Um, listening to and I can't stop and there is a connection because of the lighthouse and I don't know if you saw that but my website is called the lighthouse and we yes, have lighthouse symbols all, all over the it's a, a workshop center spiritual center uh, very busy at the moment but we have lighthouse all over the place and it's for us it's a big symbol yeah? and, the, and the book is the, the guardian of light and in that book you you started before you told the story that uh, you had a thought when you saw the lighthouse the first time and you said how could a single light make such a difference to many lives and how could so many trust that light and it caretakers mm -hmm. uh, so we, can you share more about that what you what you sense if you work with a lighthouse or if you see a lighthouse yes uh you see uh the lighthouse uh for me has always been a symbol because so many uh, 
people, you know, uh, in ships or in the ocean, they trust that light because it's the only point of safety they feel when they are in, in open seas or close to the coast at night. But it's kind of a, it's a kind of metaphor mm. because the same way that a lighthouse can guide sailors, uh, in my case, uh, uh, it's a voice of the heart that takes me to places I never imagined I could be. And, and the fact that I am always live close to the ocean because uh, I have to wet my scales every day. Mm. I go to the ocean I, if, I, if I can every day, mm. uh, like, a, like a fish. Mm. And, uh, and again, it, it makes me feel safe. Mm. Uh, when I get into the water and I come out of the water, it's like I forget totally about the world we live in. Mm. Sometimes it's really hectic. Mm. Yeah. You know, we're always in a in a rush, running. Uh, everything seems to be important when it's not so important, at least for me. And in the ocean and and, and the lighthouse and the book, uh, uh, I, I discovered throughout my life that the most important things, at least for me, in life, are the simple things of the day to day. Mm. And, and they are free. Yeah. I mean, this morning, uh, I saw one of the most beautiful rainbows I've seen in my life because it was raining a little uh, here in Tenerife. Uh, then the sun came out, the, the sky was so blue, and, and the butterflies started uh, flying through, through the trees. And, and it's just, it, it just, just a matter of stop, revive, survive. Mm. Sit down and contemplate how wonderful the world is. Mm. Yeah. And at least for me, those are the riches of my life. Yeah. Yeah, so just really enjoying the, the be here now, the present moment, and being in awe and wonder of what's around you. And, and I think that the message is so important because we all get so lost with the social media and uh, what we do and the virtual realities all outside, outside, and, and we get away from our heart. Yeah. And that's, that's the gift you, you give to the readers that happened with me is every time I'm listening to it, every time I'm reading it, it connects me to my heart again. And it's just then it's, yeah, it's a different presence around me. Yeah, it's going back to the basics, Nico. And I mm -hmm. thank you for your words. Mm -hmm. But again, as I said in the, at the beginning, uh, I never thought when, I, when the Dolphin was published and then in my other books, for me, the, the most beautiful gift I could get was to realize that there were so many people around the world that they were questioning their life mm -hmm. the way I was questioning mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's true because we live, we live in a society that goes faster and faster, um, competition, uh, and technology, which is okay. Uh, it's the way we use technology. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example, the cell phone. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm in an airport waiting for a plane, every time I'm in a restaurant or everywhere, people are just staring at their, you know, uh, 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 a piece of glass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as if happiness would be there. Mm -hmm. uh, again, there's nothing wrong with the cell phone. It mm -hmm. can, like, you know, like the, like, like the technology we're using right now. It helps us communicate, uh, it gives us time, mm -hmm. the time to live. Mm -hmm. But if, if you get hooked to the cell phone, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. everything there is, it's not the real world. Yeah. And, and you're right. No matter who I'm talking to, I mean, one topic is always what's the true meaning of life? Yeah. And, and then maybe if you can share a little bit about the new book, uh, the, the Messenger, or in German, Der Bote, uh, which is, just came out and it's already a bestseller. 
and okay. as I told you before, I know you have your copy too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a miracle. I mean, uh, for the people who see us on, on YouTube, um, so five minutes before we started the call, literally, the doorbell rang, and this book was delivered to me. And I said, "Wow, what what a sign!" Yeah, there, there are no there are no coincidences. Yeah, right? there are no coincidences. You can live the life you're you're supposed to live. The signs yeah. are there. It's up to you to follow them. Yeah. Or sometimes they only appear once, and and you can mm -hmm. get lost again. Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm I'm a strong believer in synchronicities. Yes. Uh, and then so just be, you used, be alert. You used to work better than me. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Would you like to share? I mean, why why is the book so successful? And 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 uh, Again, what's it all about? Yeah. Again, uh, I'm 59 years old, hmm. and yet I've been lucky enough to 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 keep the eight-year-old child that I was always with me. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, put it this way: I'm a, I'm a grown-up that likes to play like a eight-year child. Hmm. That doesn't mean that I don't have responsibilities. But I give the really importance of responsibilities uh, and not more. Uh, and uh, the same happened with the, uh, with the messenger. Uh, it just came straight from the heart. Mm. And I, I remember, I, again, I just started typing without using my mind as a bypass to write the book. And when I finished writing it, it happened what happened with the dolphin. I said, did I write this? Mm -hmm. And then I said, no, don't keep, keep things simple. In some way you have found the true purpose of your life. And in some way the universe is guiding you to, to put in words all the experiences of a life, uh, 59 year old life in which I took the road less traveled mm -hmm. and by traveling so much around the world, I, I learned so many things mm -hmm. that at least for me had, have nothing to do with the day to day living. Mm -hmm. And, and basically it's, it's, uh, the book of, of, uh, where, it's a book that uh, tells you, uh, at least in, in my case, what I found have been, are the real treasures of life. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, when the book start to, started to sell in, in, in bookstores, I realized we are all messengers. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why the, the title came without even thinking about it. Right now, the wonderful job, the uh, spiritual uh, miracle that you're doing, Nico, mm. you're a messenger. Mm. Thank you. And yeah. we're all messengers. Mm. Uh, because uh, I said in a book, there's no creature small or, or, or small enough that doesn't have something to give to the world. Mm. I think we all have something to give to the world. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and, and I, I get that feedback also sometimes that people, if, if I do uh, like workshops on culture or spiritual workshop, they, they just tell me, you are the message. It's not you are the message. And that's now I'm even more curious to, to, to read the book. You are the messenger. You're the book. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. From your own place in the world. Yeah. Wow. So, um, is, do you have at the moment, are you writing another book or what are your desires for the future? Uh, no, because uh, I can feel what is happening with this book. Mm. And uh, again, uh, one of the things that, uh, and, and this will answer your question, mm. one of the things that I've learned in my life uh, to do, Nico, is to erase many words from the hard disk of my mind. Words like hate, vengeance, weariness, uh, competing with others. Mm. Uh, and that has given me uh, a 
the advantage of, of traveling much lighter without a backpack behind mm -hmm. and uh and what i can see that is happening with Herbote is exactly what happened with the dolphin 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh contracts are starting to come from here from there through my literary agent mm -hmm. so i thought my job in 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 my life was was done but again life works in wonderful ways it seems that there's still something i have to say or at least share with others mm -hmm. and and i know that the next uh, couple of years uh, for example the book is going to be released in italy in latin america again it's worldwide mm -hmm. so basically i started with uh, german countries mm -hmm. uh, also uh, german switzerland austria and, uh, and germany but now I know what comes and I love it because uh, it's not that I sh share with people. I also learn from so many people, different people from the world. And you know that better than anyone because uh, your guests are from all over the world. Mm. Um, you, in, in a way you are depending on the place you were born. Mm. Um, but in the end, we're all human beings. Mm. So uh, I have two or three big dreams for this uh, uh, next year, at least. Mm. Uh, one is uh, spreading the word with uh, the messenger mm -hmm. around the world. Um, there's an animation film coming, a huge one. Uh, uh, I cannot say anything anymore, uh, anything else. Ah. Oh. <laughs> but it will hit the screens worldwide. Uh, mm. based on one of my books mm. and I have a son and mm. he's 11 mm. he needs me more than ever mm. and I want to share quality life with him mm. beautiful yeah that resonates with me and he, he it's amazing he te when I see him uh, he teaches me more things that I can teach to him mm. Mm yeah it's amazing sometimes the and especially there are children they're so like old souls and yes. you just look in their eyes and you just know they know what uh, there's some depths around them nico there's a change in the world and you've probably yeah. heard this uh with some of your guests uh, mm. this new generation mm. is totally different yes uh for them fame and richness it's not a dream. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is that a lot of young people are vegetarians. Mm -hmm. They don't want to eat meat. Mm -hmm. They tell me to me because I'm a vegetarian all mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. They say, no, we don't want to kill animals. We want to play with them. Mm -hmm. And I guess that in, in a way, the universe itself is sending all these amazing souls to 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 uh to to fix all the terrible damage we have mm. done nature yeah 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 i couldn't agree more with you Sergio. i think there's a shift in consciousness with this new generation growing up uh and um i, I became a grandfather oh, 18, that's 18 18 months ago but then also you I have this uh uh, Mahesh on my arms and I, all of a sudden something feels vibrating he's doing nothing he's just looking but there is something is happening and then he looks and I look in his eyes and he he, he just keeps looking and it's so so present where I said wow yeah. how does this happen it's a miracle yeah he, he, he's come with a uh, with the, with with the information he needs already yeah, yeah. And he knows it yeah. And, and as I said, I see this also now in the business world. There's a shift with the younger generation. They don't want to have a job from eight to five. No. They're just looking for something holistic and where they find a purpose and a meaning in life and they can have a contribution. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's something I learned the hard way. And, and I think uh, this new generation knows it. Mm -hmm. uh, money will never bring happiness. Mm -hmm. It's important. Of course. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry next day of how you're going to pay your bills. Uh, it's also 
as I always say, you know, people sometimes ask me, yeah, you're making more money with your books than you used to make as a CEO. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, Nico, and, and, and I say this in a very humble way, uh, most of the royalties I get, I give them away. Mm -hmm. Because humbleness is, for me, so important. And when we start to speak about our house, our car, we don't realize that there are borrowed things. We will use them for 40 or 50 years, but they don't belong to us. The only thing that really belongs to us is our life, mm. our time. And uh, so I live in a small house, looking at the ocean, surrounded by nature, got my surfboards, my laptop. Now with the beautiful technology, we can communicate everywhere. And I wish no more. Mm. Oh, I feel such a sense of satisfaction when I'm listening to you. Uh, that that's beautiful. This is just oh, revelation. There, 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 there is nothing more. It's, it's just, just, humble. It's, it's just humble. being humble and the simple things in life. I mean, this is just for for me in this conversation. I'm learning so much, and it lands so deeply. Um, I, I think that's I will listen to it over and over again myself. It's it's amazing. Just a humble human being that one yeah. day decided to follow the the voice of his heart and instead of, of following the road already taken, decided to beat his own trail. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, also and then, uh, when I publish the podcast, I will uh, add the, the links of your books, uh, some of them uh, in the description so that the listeners, uh, that you can go directly there and uh, either buy the book or listen to it. I, I love both. Uh, I've also, in German language, it's a, it's a great voice, by the way, the, the person who's reading the book, it's just really amazing. So that helps also a lot, I think. Uh, and then I'm sure then many people uh, from, from our community will write and review for you because it's just really heart opening and touching. I really appreciate that, uh, Nico. And, and I hope you see the same way as me. Uh, Thanks you, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, more than the marketing, again, we're all messengers. Maybe uh, it will make some people think. And again, uh, the 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 profit of those books will go to people that really need it. Mm. Yeah. That are not as lucky as you or me. Mm. Yeah, I would have beautiful way to to give to others as well i didn't know that well so thank you for sharing no nico yeah. thank you for the, this beautiful opportunity you've been talking about me being a spiritual person but mm. come on look at you mm. look at you your your eyes to say all mm. thank you thank you so much and you know the way we were connected it, it's just a miracle by itself yeah it, it just i mean uh, through, through some uh, Facebook discussions and all of a sudden we sit here and have this deep spirited conversation and I learned so much and uh, because, you, because you saw the signs and I saw the signs Sylvia mm. saw the signs and mm. yes yeah. yeah we have to do this yeah. and I'm so honored to be here Brian. Mm. beautiful Sergio uh, thank you for this amazing sharing, for your insights, uh, for sharing with the listeners uh, your, your soul journey and uh, what you do with your books. And uh, now I'm curious, obviously, about the, the movie. But you said you cannot tell anything anymore. But I'm sure this will be a huge success. And then, uh, yeah, uh, The Messengers, I think, will be a worldwide uh, celebrated book. And I try to do everything to support you also in spreading your message. Thank you again for your time and for the oh, Thank you. Uh, I feel really honored again uh, to be in your program, Nico. It will spread like, mm. like the wind throughout the world because uh, yeah. the magic is there. I can feel mm. it. Yeah. And mm. uh, just to finish, uh, maybe two or three thoughts for, for, for your listeners. Mm. I've learned in my life that it's better to be rather than to have. And to, if you have, share it. Mm. It's definitely better to live rather than exist. Mm. Um, it's so simple to be happy. Mm. The trick 
is to stay simple throughout the lifetime. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, to share with you, uh, I'm, I feel blessed. Never put in your mind matters that only belong to your heart. That's where everything gets complicated. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nico. Yeah, thank you so much, Sergio. I feel inspired in your presence. Um, yeah, and, and I also now know why people call you the poet of the heart and the soul. Uh, it's just really beautiful. Thank, thank you again. And now um, I can't wait to, to read your book. Oh, thank you very much, Nico. All, All the best. best of the best. And as I always say, uh, until next time, because yes. there, there's always a next time. Yes. Okay, see Thank you then. Thank you, Sergio. Bye. Thank you very much, Nico. Bye. Podcast for your soul, your compass, your journey, your light.